Hey everybody, you know, one of my favorite diesel locomotives of all time is also one of the largest diesel locomotives ever made. And in fact, that's why I like it so much, because it is so ridiculously huge. And of course, I'm talking about the EMD DD35A. This one is made by Lionel, and we're going to check it out right now on Eric's Trains. All right, the DD35A, Lionel offered this in their 2021 Volume 2 catalog, and these began showing up in train stores in late summer, early fall of 2022. Now, the last time they cataloged the DD35A was 10 years prior in their 2011 catalog, 2011 Volume 1 to be exact, and I know that because I have one of those in my collection. There it is, UP number 72. And I filmed a review for that when it first came out. I'll put a link to that review in this video in case you want to check it out. So when I saw that Lionel was reissuing the DD35A in 2021, I decided to pick one up because, first of all, I love the DD35A. It's a gigantic, beautiful locomotive, as you can see. And also, I figured, well, it's been 10 years. Let's see what Lionel's changed and upgraded on the model. And indeed, there are some upgrades and changes over the previous release. That's the nice thing about Lionel. They're always upgrading and changing their models. And so so if you bought one 10 years ago and you buy a new one, chances are the new one's going to have some stuff the old one did not. And it just makes good business sense to do that because it gives your customers a reason to upgrade to the latest and greatest. I mean, if this DD35A was exactly the same as the one made 10 years ago, what incentive would I have to get a new one? But by always evolving and improving your technology and sounds and details and so forth, you give your customers a reason to upgrade. And so on this one, there's quite a few differences. First of all, on a cosmetic side, we finally have these sand fill caps on the handrails on both sides. That's a big deal. This one also has a beacon light. I don't think the previous release had the beacon light. And then in terms of sounds, we've now got five horns and five bell sounds, just like all modern Lionel locomotives. And we've also got Bluetooth on board. So yeah, there's a little bit of everything. We've got some cosmetic upgrades, some sound upgrades, and some technology upgrades. Not bad. Anyway, the real DD35A was the result of cramming two GP35 locomotives together to form one massive diesel locomotive that was just over 85 feet long and generated right around 5,000 horsepower. And it was one of three similar types of locomotives developed by EMD in the 1960s. The first one was the DD35, no A, just DD35, and it was a cabless booster unit. And those were built in the early 1960s. There were 30 of them made. 27 of them went to the Union Pacific and three went to the Southern Pacific, and they were all retired by 1977. However, while EMD was developing the DD-35, the Union Pacific also made it known that they would like a cabbed version, and so that was eventually developed and called the DD-35A, which is what we have here. Union Pacific was the only buyer of the DD-35A, and there were 15 made, all in 1965, and they had road numbers 70 through 84, and they remained in service until 1981. Now, because Union Pacific was the only operator of the DD-35A, obviously what I've got here is a fantasy paint scheme, and again, I decided to do it because I already had a Union Pacific DD DD35A, and so I decided to go with something different this time. Now, as big as these things are at over 85 feet, there was another similar locomotive made by EMD in the late 1960s, and of course that was the DDA40X, which was over 98 feet long. Absolutely massive. And fortunately, I've got a model of the DDA40X in my collection. There it is. This is one that was made by MTH some years ago. It was part of a dealer appreciation set that included the DDA40X as well as some passenger cars. It's an absolutely beautiful locomotive, and it's still in perfect operational condition. However, although you probably can't see it on the video, all of the glossy paint on this model has begun to develop cracks. There is cracking all over it, and in fact, a couple flecks of paint have come off, and so I now have to handle it very carefully to try to protect the paint and keep any more of it from falling off. Now, back to the Lionel model. In the 2021 Volume 2 catalog, Lionel offered six different versions of the DD35A in three different road names. So they did four Union Pacific DD35As. They did number 71, number 81 that has a flag on it, number 76, and number 77. They did two Alaskas, number 5000 and 5001, and they also 
did Santa Fe. As you see here, they did numbers 1650 and 1652. Stats wise, this model measures in at right at 22 and a half inches long. It weighs six pounds, four ounces. When tested, it generated two pounds, 11 ounces of pulling power, which is pretty good for something this size. And the minimum required curve needed to operate this model is 042. Under the hood, you've got Legacy Command, Legacy Rail Sounds, and the aforementioned Bluetooth on board. There are two flywheel motors, one above each truck. There are also two fan-driven smoke units, one for each of the two smokestacks. You've got all LED lighting, and that includes a lighted cab interior, the operating beacon light, an operating headlight, and a light on the back, as well as lighted number boards. Going in for some close-ups, here's the front pilot. They did a pretty good job. There's all sorts of add-on hoses, a coupler cut bar, and then of course in the middle we've got that big O-gauge electrocoupler. Now, these pilots are not attached to the body of the locomotive. They're attached to the trucks and they turn with the trucks, and that of course allows this locomotive to get around tighter curves than it otherwise would be if the pilots were attached to the body. Of course, that takes away from the realism a little bit, but it also allows these things to appeal to a wider audience. Now, recently, Lionel has begun adding semi-fixed pilots to a lot of their models, but I imagine that won't happen anytime soon with the DD35A because if they did have fixed pilots on this thing, the minimum required curve would greatly increase, probably 072 or higher. The cab area looks great. Of course, you can't beat that Santa Fe logo scrolled across the front of the nose. There's a metal safety chain here, and there's one on the back as well. And then we've also got metal handrails and metal stanchions going down the entire length of the locomotive. And then we've got add-on details like windshield wipers, grab irons, and sand fill caps. And then again, there's a lighted cab interior, and there are two hand-painted crew figures inside the cab. And by the way, if you've ever wondered what this F means on locomotives, it means fridge, as in refrigerator. That's where the refrigerator is back here, and that's where the engineers keep their beer. And here's one of the trucks that those pilots attach to. It looks pretty good. I like the silver paint. It's got nice detailing, including a little ladder that goes up to the ladder on the body. Here's that walkway between the two sides, and of course, this is one of the hallmark features of the DD35As. And here's one of the two sandboxes that I mentioned earlier. And as I said, these were absent on the previous run of the DD35A. And it's nice to see that Lionel added those for this run. And by the way, for those of you who don't know, the reason why steam locomotives and diesels contain sandboxes is because the sand is sprayed onto the rails just ahead of the wheels to give the wheels traction. And here's a look at the back. Not quite as fancy as the front, but we do have an operational light, add-on grab irons, and again, there's a metal safety chain here. The rooftop of the DD35A looks pretty cool with all sorts of nice detailing. We've got a little add-on horn and a bunch of metal lift rings. And then inside each one of these fan housings, there is a free spinning fan blade. Now, these two sections can be removed. So if we carefully remove this section, there's really nothing under here except for the antenna for the legacy system. I suspect at one point in time on an older version of this model, there was something under here that you could access like a control switch or a battery compartment back when these things required 9 volt batteries and then under this compartment we've got the master controls for the engine so we've got the run program switch the bluetooth on off switch and then two switches to turn the two smoke units on or off here's one of those fan driven smoke units and as always to load smoke fluid into the smoke unit you simply pour the smoke fluid directly down the stack Here's a look at the underside of one of these bad boys. We've got four pickup rollers, two per truck. There are two traction tires on each truck for a total of four. Now on each truck, the inner two axles are driven, the outer axles are free rolling, and the wheels on this axle have no flanges, and that's to allow this thing to get around tighter curves. Then we've got two speakers for the sound system, one here and one here, and then right here in the middle is the sensor for the Lionel LCS sensor track if you choose to use one. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and start this thing up. Dispatcher here, start her up, stand by for track orders, over. Yes, sir. We'll fire her up. Out. Okay, as I said, unlike the previous release of the DD35A back in 2011, this one has the five horn tones and five bell tones. So let's check those out, starting with the horn. Thank you. 
and check out the beacon light doing its thing. That's cool. And here's a sampling of some of the crew talk sounds.
right, so there you have it, Lionel's new DD35A locomotive. I'm really glad I picked one of these up, and I'm happy to add it to my growing collection of DD35As and DDA40Xs. I think it would be really cool if Lionel would do a DDA40X and... I know that's a different model, but maybe something easier to do would be one of the cabless booster unit DD35s. That would be super cool. If you'd like to pick one of these up for yourself, the original retail price was right at $700. Now that's the full retail price. If you go through a good Lionel dealer, you should be able to get a bit of a discount off that retail price. And as always, if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer, try my favorite train store, which is Legacy Station. You can find them on the web at LegacyStation.com or give them a call at 770-339-7780. If you'd like to support this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. That can be done through Patreon at patreon.com slash ericstrains. Patreon supporters get access to all sorts of perks and benefits, and you can read about those benefits on my Patreon page. I'd like to put a big thank you out there to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your support means the world, not only to me, but to the future of this channel. And an extra super big thank you goes out to my premium tier Patreon supporters. You'll see their names at the end of this video. And finally, if you'd like to buy some Eric Strains merchandise, if you look below this video, you should see a listing of some Eric Strains stuff. If you click on those, it'll go to my store, and there's all sorts of stuff there. T-shirts, cups, phone cases, the works. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. cab area looks great of course you can't ugh. now here in the middle these two pieces can be removed so if we remove oops <laughs> and here's a look at the back not not uh, <laughs> not quite as fancy